may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer requests in the bottom. As I've told you, we've been watching things that's happening also in Europe. And there's a lot of stuff we're going to discuss here that's happening that you're not going to hear in the media. There's a lot of things happening everywhere you're not going to hear in the media. If it wasn't for us here on YouTube, these watchmen doing their jobs each and every day holding their place on the wall. We wouldn't know any of this information. It's getting harder and harder to get. I will tell you this. It's getting very hard to get. Now, before that, there was a family that needed my help. They contacted me, and I looked into it, and this family does need a lot of help. Their uh, link will be in the description box, because I always tell you, if we can't help everybody, we try to do the best we can. Only if you have anything, if you have maybe $10 laying around somewhere, you know, try to help them out. Only if you can. I know everybody's struggling. I know everybody's hurting, including me. We all are. So it's hard to come up with anything. Everybody's going to the grocery store and boy, they're feeling a pinch. I can't even buy groceries anymore. They're so expensive, especially if it comes to hamburger meat and stuff. So I know everybody out there is hurting. So like I said, if you have, you have it, try to help them if you can. We try, like I said, we can't help everybody, but we try to help families that are in, especially have families that are getting close to being homeless and are truly in help, uh, needing help as best as they can. So thank you for all those who do try to help these families. Uh, we put it out there. We don't never ask you. It's there if you can. That's why it's there. Now, what's happening in Europe is getting disturbing by the day. Now, I've told you Poland is a, a very critical place right now. There's a lot of equipment going in there. They're changing road signs to show where the military equipment is going. There is a lot of stuff happening. Also, President Biden has requested the prime minister and the president of Poland to show up here in America. Something big is happening there. I told you that. They're planning for something huge. Either they're going to cause it themselves or it's going to happen to them. Right now, it's hard to believe anybody because everybody's lying. But Poland believes they're about to be attacked. Belarus has told all their people in the last couple of days to plan for World War III. It is coming. And they are correct. I told you Belarus would play a huge role, and most of that country will be annihilated very soon somewhere. They have gotten a lot of nuclear weapons since when we first started talking about them. Even God showed us many, many years ago that Belarus would play a major role with Russia taking Ukraine back. And eventually that will happen. It's already in the progress as we speak. Russia last night took back two more places that they had lost. Ukraine is doing their best to hold them back, but it's not happening. Russia made a direct threat to Poland that you are not Ukraine. We will annihilate you. We will never put a boot on your ground. We will just level and kill each and every one of you. You're not our brothers. That came out today. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. You're hearing these threats, just like in Transistoria. And many other countries right now that's planning on invading their neighbors. There's a lot of it going on. Maybe 20, 30 of them. The world is at war. You just don't know it yet. But it is happening. Right now, there's a major buildup of weapons in Poland, Finland, and Sweden. Sweden's already told their people to start building their own bunkers. It is that bad. While everybody here is worried about mundane stuff in our sleep. People in America believe they're protected while suddenly... Millions of people have been coming across that border that are not fans of any Americans. My some Americans with no knowledge and no sense say, you know, let them all in, let them all in. Well, it's going to come back to haunt them. 
There's a reason why they're making a run for everybody's weapons because it's going to start from the inside out. The other day, as they lied specifically that the solar flares is what knocked out AT&T, which is an all-out lie, there was a major offensive cyber attack happening all through the day. It's still in progress. Many pharmacies are still being struck. This is still in progress. No media wants to touch it because they are owned by the government. The days of free press are all gone. You can forget it. Lucifer has his hands in everybody's pocket. The corruption runs all worldwide. Plus, we're being invaded by some other thing that we call Nephilim. They was here before, and they're here now. But now, they can hide in plain sight. This is happening everywhere. It's what happened in Miami. Many people believe that was just Photoshop. It ain't real. It's everything. These people will not believe in anything. There is this percentage of people... These are the percentage I do believe the Bible talks about in the last days when they finally see this stuff, their heart's going to fill them because they would not believe in anything here. Even though God placed things right in front of their eyes, they still wouldn't see it. They refused it to the very end. But right now, the war in Europe is progressing at an alarming speed. We're seeing tons of equipment being moved from the United States from the West Coast to the East Coast, from the East Coast into Europe and into the Mediterranean. Yemen is still sinking ships. It's not big news right now because people don't care. As I said, the world wants to just go back to sleep. Let these people just kill themselves. But that's just not the way it's going to work this time. This time it will spread across the planet in a fire rage that you have never seen. The days of Walmart, going to movie theaters, going to sports events are coming to an end. They will uh, end abruptly on one day and you won't see those events come back. It's just the truth. Once it goes, it's gone. It's not coming back. Now, the people that are stuck in the tribulation, many of them will just earn to get that back. And they will take the mark of the beast to get it, whatever they can to get some kind of normalcy back. That is what's in the progress right now. The one beast system is in progress. It's already been developed by Microsoft. It's already got a patent out there. The Chinese, with their surveillance and their new system, can track everybody in real time, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you can't get away from it. All these systems added to AI that Google has put out that's very intelligent, and some say deathly intelligent, to the point where the the creator of it begged Google to kill it because it had come conscience. It's not conscience. The devil. He's everywhere. And he's right under your feet. And he's making a move. He's making a move against Israel. And he's making a move against the church. You just don't know it. And you're not going to hear it unless you have these channels that are watching for these events. And we have to dig for it. And I mean dig deeply. Almost everything that we get today has been taken away news-wise. We have to dig a long time sometimes. I've spent hours just today digging for the stuff to look for the tribulation signs that are coming. And you got to take sometimes a long time to find out where these things are. But what we're seeing in Poland is definitely a huge sign that it's about to go really hot there. With Biden requesting the presence of them, they're changing their own signs. Also, Ukraine has come out and said that that Russian bridge that's there, as I told you, close to Zaporizhia, there, I can't think of the place it's called right now, but that bridge is a vital choke point between Russia and to the southern part of Ukraine. Ukraine's been trying to take it out for over a year. They struck it twice, but they've told now, I come out this morning and told all Russians not to get on that bridge because they're going to take it out. They do have those weapons to do that now. Russia has said if they take those out, it will be a disaster beyond belief. Now remember, I saw a map, and it was just a map with a big circle, and I wondered if that was some kind of fallout or some kind of accident. Zaporizhia power plant is once again in the, the uh, in the aim of this war. That nuclear plant could be blown up by accident or by just to do it. That might be what I saw, and that could trigger everything in Europe. Now, both sides have threatened this since the beginning, so we got to keep an eye on it. 
but God did show me a map with a big circle. It was almost like a big fallout zone. It could be a nuclear power plant that went critical, just like we had in Chernobyl. Except this time it would be done on purpose. Both sides have threatened to do this. This bridge that I've told you about, they've tried to take out quite a few times. Russia has threatened nuclear war over it too. Also, as Lindsey Graham and some other not too long ago was saying that any kind of nuclear fallout will be declared a nuclear war with the United States striking Russia. This is out of their mouths, not mine. So they put sensors all around Ukraine. Hmm, that's strange. Why would they do that? They're looking for something to happen. They want it to happen. I've told you many times that what you're seeing right now is planned, and it is. Every bit of this is planned to go hot at a certain time. While you're not looking, it will be on a summer day, spring or summer, and all of a sudden all hell will break loose upon this earth. No American will even see it coming. I've already seen it. It will happen out of nowhere, but soon, either right then or right after, the rapture of the church will take place. We're not subject to wrath, and we will be leaving very, very soon. I've said this many, many times, and it is coming. The red heifers is the final sign I needed. Now, everybody else ignores Israel. Satan's made them believe that they're not important, but I know better. I know they are the most important area in the world. That is where the new capital and the millennial reign will be held. When the new heaven and the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven and make its place here. Bob Barber the other night was having a good talk about it, about how big it is. It would actually reach into the atmosphere. This thing's huge, half the size of the United States. It's massive. It could fit every saint and Christian today in it. And you would still have enough room to build two Empire State buildings in your area. That's how big this thing is. I know that's hard to explain, but the Bible does not lie. That's how big New Jerusalem will be when it comes down out of the heavens. It's massive, massive, massive. But it shows you what you have to look forward to. That we don't have to be here much longer. That the time period of man is coming to an end. The grace period is coming to an end. The Bible tells us that. What you're seeing with the red heifers and everything, that is the final sign that I needed to know the rapture of the church is imminent. The other people will ignore it, and I've seen a lot of these big channels do that. They Still, after seeing that, they say, well, the tribulation won't start to 2030. That shows me that these people either work for Satan and pretend to work for God, or they just don't know what they're talking about. But as I said, people today will teach you Israel is not important that the Jews are not important. There is a reason why the most small country that it is, half the size of Rhode Island in the United States, has been aimed for since day one. Why is that? Why has a country that doesn't mean anything, and that people today say, you know, they need to have a peace treaty with everybody, and that's not Israel's land. Well, why is it since Israel's inception, all the way back to the beginning, every country on this planet is trying to wipe it out? it's not important, if that land is not important, if there's no God, why is everybody fighting over that land? Because there is a God, and that land was promised to the Jews, and Satan knows it. That's why everybody has went there to relocate them. But God himself, Jesus told us that they would come back into the land, and they did that in 1948. We call that the fig tree generation that started in 1950. You got to give two years. I grow trees. It takes two years for them to bloom after you put them in the ground. It takes two years. That generation and everybody else, a lot of these big channels, ignore that also. They say that's not real. Of course. Everything about Israel is not real and don't, don't pay no attention to it. My good friend Bob Barber knows better also, just like I do, and Mr. Aaron there at God a Minute, and also Dr. Barry Aw. We know how important Israel is in the last days. We pay attention to it. So does Lisa Boyce, the Kim Fisher, all of us. We know how important Israel plays its role. It is the only thing that plays a role. If you want to know how close we come to the end, you watch Israel. I was taught that from my grandmother even when I was a child. They knew back in the day that Israel is the centerpiece of God, and it is. He loves his people. They're his chosen people. Yes, he knew what they would do to him, but he still loved them. He still chose to be a Jew when he became flesh, and he did. 
Many will tell you he, he did this, he did that. But let me tell you something. My father was sinless. He never, ever fell into temptation, even though the Satan and the church, so a lot of them will try to tell you he did. But he did not. He came in and fulfilled the position of the, the last Adam. The first Adam sinned in the garden after Eve did what she, what she did. Now, Adam, after Eve did that, didn't want to be alone. He knew she was going to die, so he did the same thing because he loved her. Now, they was moved out of the garden. So Jesus came to fulfill the mistake that they created. So he was the last Adam. People don't understand, this all started back, and God knew all this stuff would happen. People ask me, why would he do that? Well, I think in the beginning, when God made angels and they did what they did, they came down here and gave up their holy bodies, their resurrected bodies, what we will have when we leave here. They gave those up to become mortal and mated with humans. That's how this all this mess, but God knew all this was still going to happen. But I think he was looking for people, chosen children that would choose him, even though they had free will to choose either way. He wanted to truly people that wanted to be with him. And I think that's why all this happened the way it is. Like I said, God gives everybody free reign. You have free will. It's a democracy. That's the way he works. He ain't going to force you. I do believe he knows who will and who won't. I think all that. Now, a lot of people make the mistake. They're like, well, you can be written out of the book of Lamb. Not if you're saved. You cannot. If you're saved, you're saved. What I was talking about when it talks about that is the people who never give Jesus the chance in the first place. After a while, if they never accept him, then their names are written out of the book of Lamb. But the ones that are saved, they don't go back in and take it back out. Okay, It don't work that way. That's not what that says. The devil wants you to think that. He wants you to think that every time you make a mistake, Paul puts an end to that permanently when he says that you'll battle with your flesh all the way to the end. But it's not the outside. It's on the inside. Once you understand when Adam and Eve did what they did, Man was cursed, and it was a curse put upon the world. So when you were born, you were dark inside. When God looked down at you, you couldn't see you because of the sin. Now, when you accept, when Jesus comes in and he fixes this on the cross, that's why he said, it's finished. When he does that, when you accept what Jesus did and you have faith in the blood of Jesus, that blackness goes away. So when God looks down, he can actually see you again. It has nothing to do with tattoos, piercings, what's happening on the outside. He doesn't look at that anymore. It's what's inside. The church don't want you to know that. A lot of other people don't. See, so they don't know how to rightfully divide. So they jumble the law into the grace period because they want to live by their rules. Not what Jesus did. They, Jesus wasn't enough for a lot of people. They have to do it on their own. It has to be me that does it. It's not you. You will always fail. You will always fall. You're, none of us are worthy to ever get into heaven. Won't you accept that? These people believe they, they could, they, they're going to be worthy. There's nobody worthy on this planet to get to heaven. Nobody. Not me, not you, not anyone. We all fail. We'll all come up short. All the way till we're gone. Paul knew that. And that's why he talked about the time of grace when Jesus did that on the cross. See, Jesus knew he knew we could never get into heaven. Never. No matter what you do, how many times. There's people like, well, you got to go by the law. People think there's the law is Ten Commandments. That's not the law. The law is like 600 and some commandments. Half of them we don't even know. So you already failed before you ever started. They won't tell you that either because they don't know the word. Yeah, there's 600 and some laws. Half of them we don't even know. So you've already failed before you started. you got to finally admit you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. And that's why I need the blood of Jesus. Once you finally figure that out, you're saved. It's not what's on the outside. See, everybody today, they look on the outside. Oh, that man's got piercing. That guy's got tattoos. Oh, he said this. He said that. That's not it. It's not the way it works. They don't even understand what Jesus did on the cross. They have no clue whatsoever. Jesus loved you so much that he died on the cross for you. And all you got to do is simply believe what he did, that he died for your sins, you, and that you are a sinner. See, people can't admit they're a sinner. Oh, no, I, I don't sin. I'm this and that. No, 
You sin. You sin every day before you even know you sinned. As I said, there are so many laws that we don't even know them all. That's why we don't live under the law. Jesus come and conquered it. He was trying to teach the Jews, you cannot do this on your own. You got to do it through me. And see, they wouldn't listen. They still won't listen. So as half the church won't listen to him either. See, they believe only through their deeds can they get into heaven. And they will be left here. Because it's all about Jesus. His blood. But Jesus didn't want none of you to perish. He didn't want none of us. So he made it simple. He did his first act upon the cross, showing us how simple it would be. People don't like this. A lot of big people, even good people, don't believe. They think this is a terrible example. But Jesus didn't do anything by accident. So I'd be careful what I say. When Jesus got on that cross, there was two, two on the, one on each side. Now, when he asked the thief, do you believe him? He said, yes. He said, well, you will be with me in heaven. He didn't get baptized. He didn't go jump through hoops. He didn't go to church every day. Jesus did that because he knew what we would be going through today. The people would teach you, you can lose your salvation, all that stuff. He knew what would be happening. To, he even told us what these people would do. Even all the way to the mockers and everything else. He told us exactly how these people would be in the last days. Even the corrupt church that we live in today. He told us what would be happening. He knew. That's why he did that at that exact time and one on each. He had. That's why he did it. So we would see there's the belief on his blood that he finished it all. There's nothing you can do to get yourself into heaven. There is none. You've got to accept the blood of Jesus. He did it. He is the key. He is the only way you're getting in. I don't care what you do, how many good deeds you did. It's still not going to get you into heaven if you don't have the blood of Jesus. You can do whatever you want. Do through all these rituals. They're still not going to get you into heaven. They're not. It's the belief in the blood of Jesus. That's how you get in. That's the word of God, people. You can believe it or not or believe what the church teaches you. But Paul simply said, and Jesus did it all. I mean, he shows you the perfect example. But people hate that. They hate that when you bring that up. And there's a reason why they hate it. People do not like what Jesus did because Satan hated what he did. See, Satan believed he was just trying to save the Jews. He didn't realize Jesus had a whole other agenda. He was going to save the world. He was going to take the world's sins, not just the Jews. Satan knew that. He would have tried to stop it. God is always 10 steps ahead of him. Jesus is the key, my brothers and sisters. He is the key. His blood is the key. That's why I almost always songs, in the blood, in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. It's about the blood. Jesus gave you the perfect example. He said, this is finished. I did it. It's finished. And now all you got to do is believe in what he did. And you are cleaned on the inside. It's not the outside. But see, humans only see what's on the outside. They don't care about what's on the in here. They only care about what's on the outside. Oh, you're ugly. Oh, you look bad. Oh, you look mean. That's all they care about. It's all on the outside. See, but Jesus don't see the outside. He sees what's in here. Do you believe in the blood of Jesus? He'll know it's in here. He knows who believes and who don't. I know what he did on the cross. I know he did it. I wasn't there, but I know he did it. I've seen the miracles that Jesus can do. I've seen miracles. I've seen him do things that I could even explain. I know what he can do. And I'm here to tell you he's real. And he is right now trying to get you to wake up, those that are lost, and trust in him before it's too late. Because the end of the world is coming. The choice is yours. What side and where you're going to spend eternity at. Trust in Jesus. He is the best friend you ever have. He'll never let you down. And the end of mankind is already in progress. I'm telling you to get on that ark while you can. Pray for all the family members out there. Pray for everyone. Pray for me. I pray for you. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven.
Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.